Grey Eminence, published by Dragon Dawn Productions and designed by Ren Multimaki, allows three to five players to act behind the scenes to influence regional and global events with the manipulation of money, power, and influence. Working cooperatively, players must try to resolve conflicts and events that arise. However, each player is also working secretively to gain advantages over their opponents and become the winner of the game. Start by choosing one of the scenario cards. Your first game should be the European scenario. Flip this card to see which cards to use in the event deck, the treat deck, the faction deck, the action deck, and the victory conditions deck and place them within reach. This convenient card holder is an add-on, which you can get from the Kickstarter. Place the game board for all to use and put the resource cubes and victory point tokens nearby. Give each player a player mat of their choice. The mat will show which meeple the player will be using. Now randomize all the meeples and place them under the visibility track here. Each player receives a box of secrets and a random gray eminence card which is placed here. This card shows the starting resources that each player will receive. In this case, Deep Throat will receive no money cubes, two power cubes, three influence cubes, and one faction card. Each player now draws three victory conditions cards, chooses two of them, and places them face down here on the player mat. Place any faction cards up here. The European scenario indicates that the relationships with each of these entities is neutral, so place the five markers in the neutral spots. No, these are not the actual playing pieces that will come in the game. This is a prototype of the final game that you will receive. This game round marker, also a prototype, is placed on the start space here. A normal game will last for five rounds, or you can opt for the longer game of eight rounds. Each round of the game is played in a series of phases. All of the phases are written out on your player mat in a flowchart for easy reference. Start each round with a refresh phase. Draw four action cards up to the hand limit of eight. Keep these cards hidden from your opponents. Phase two is the event phase. Draw the top event card and read it aloud. This card is what all players must work together to resolve. Each card has four resolution possibilities. One monetary resolution, one power resolution, one influence resolution, and finally, no resolution. At this point, all players should discuss which resolution they feel that they could collectively achieve based on the action cards in their hands. Phase 3 begins when players appear to agree on a resolution. Players now bid on turn order by secretly using cubes in their supply, then revealing them simultaneously. The highest bidder chooses which position they would like to be on the visibility track, followed by the second highest bidder and so on. Power cubes beat money cubes which beat influence cubes which, by themselves, beat power cubes. However, you are not limited to how many cubes you can bid. All cubes used in bidding go to the bidding pool. In this three-player game, only one player may be in the gray eminence section. One player must be in the public eye, and one player must be in the shadows. With more players, more spaces are available in the gray eminence section. Now players immediately gain the benefits of their positions on the visibility track. The player in the public eye draws another faction card and adds it to their player mat, then gains either a money cube or an influence cube. The player in the gray eminence receives a single resource cube of their choice and an action card. The player in the shadows can now blackmail another player by taking one of their faction cards. That player may prevent this by paying two resources or by showing a concealed victory conditions card. Finally, the shadow player can take one resource from the bidding pool. Phase 4 is the programming phase where each player simultaneously places action cards face down on their player mat here. One card must be played to the common good and used to resolve the event card. One card must be played for your personal gain and one card must be played on the discard slot. A fourth spot is available if you'd like to play another card to be used either for the common good or for your personal gain, but you need to pay one resource cube of any type to place this card. Any player in the Grey Eminence section can play this fourth card free of charge. The action cards have areas showing what benefits they can give either to the common good here or for your personal gain here. Some cards can only be used for the common good and some can only be used for the personal gain. Once everyone is finished programming, move to phase 5, the presidential response. In this phase, draw cards one at a time from the tweet deck and place them here. Resolve the bottom of each card as you go. Keep drawing tweet cards until you have four or until you find a hashtag which matches one of the hashtags on the current event for this round. Most tweet cards will tell you to add or subtract cubes from the bidding pool. Now move to phase six, the action phase. The player in the public eye is the first to play the card for the common good face down. 
then reveals the personal gain card and receives the benefits from it, then discards the third card. If a fourth card was placed here, now is the time to play it, either to the common good or for your personal gain. If the player wishes to enlist the help of a faction card, take the resources from the supply and place them into the bidding pool, then turn this card upside down, showing that it is exhausted. Now the other players take their action phase turns in turn order. After all players have gone, move to the resolution phase. Shuffle all of the cards played to the common good and reveal them one at a time. Any resource benefits come from the supply and are added to the bidding pool. Now compare the resources in the bidding pool to the possible resolutions to the event card. If a resolution is reached, then the event card is resolved. If more than one resolution can be reached, then all players vote on which one to resolve. If there is a tie, then it is resolved by the player order. Each resolution has an effect on some aspect of the game. For instance, if delayed Brexit is resolved by having 8 power cubes in the bidding pool, then remove those cubes to the supply, move the EU relationship down one space, and each player must lose three money cubes. If the event card was not resolved, there are consequences to deal with as well. In this case, all players lose two money cubes. However, the person with the most money is exempt from this. Move any event cards that were resolved to this spot here. Any unresolved cards move over to this area. This card still has a chance to be resolved in future rounds. Now move on to the trading phase. Players may trade anything from resource cubes to faction or action cards, or they can even trade future promises. Finally, the last phase of any round is to check to see if you have completed any victory conditions cards, which will earn you victory points. For example, on this card, you will earn 4 victory points if at least 2 of the relationships are in conflict. Missions completed on your Grey Eminence card also earn victory points. You may only score 1 victory condition per round. Take the victory point tokens that you received as you score them. If you score a victory conditions card, keep it face up as a reminder and draw 2 new cards, keep one and discard the other. Now it is the start of a new round. Advance the round marker one space and start the refresh phase again. Draw 4 action cards up to the hand limit of 8 and now you may pay the cost to refresh any factions from your own supply. Once paid, turn the faction cards back around to show that they can be used once again. The resources from the bidding pool stay there from round to round. Play the next round just as before, following all of the phases in order until the final round. After the final round, the player with the most victory points is the winner of the game. But wait, there's one more thing to check. Look back at your scenario card's common goal. In this case, at least half of the event cards with the EU tag must be resolved. Take a look at the event cards you resolved compared to those that you could not. If this goal was not achieved, then all players lose. If the goal was achieved, the player who earned the most victory points does indeed win the game. If you found this video helpful, take a look at my other videos to see how to play more games. Thanks for watching and stay animated!